Hello, uh, I'm Shannon Lawrence. I'm a Colorado Springs based horror author. And today it's a YA reading. I did have, I have just the one thing that's published in YA. So um, that's what I'll be reading today. Get to that in just a second. You can find me at thewarriormuse.com. There's a tab that shows appearances and publications. So it's easy to get to all of them that way, or I'm on Amazon. I've got a couple of solo collections out. Loose Sludge, Blues, and Other Abominations, and Brew Souls and Other Torments. Brew Souls just came out this March. In fact, it released on March 13th, right before the world kind of ended for a while there. So it was really bad timing for a launch. And uh, this one, I have a story in. It's edited by Jamie Ferguson, The Wild Hunt, and it has a bunch of Colorado authors in it, um, all about the Fae and the Wild Hunt, if you want to look that up. And again, my website is thewarriormuse.com. My reading today for YA is from, it was first published in an anthology called Of Mist and Magic. And this entire anthology was based on an album, actually a music album. It was a collaboration that was headed by Samantha Redstreet Geary. So this particular story is called Awakening and it's inspired by the orchestration Life After Life by Philip Lober. The lush green smell of the woods wraps itself around her senses as she winds through the trees. The ground is soft and mossy, her feet sinking with each step. She looks for signs of her grandmother who sent an invitation two days ago to meet out here. Intent on her visual search, it takes her a moment to notice the utter lack of a sound. No wildlife chirps or calls, nothing moves in the trees or scuttles across the ground. Unsettled by the unnatural silence surrounding her, she jumps at the soft sound of a snapping twig and flips the red hood back to keep her line of sight clear. There's something else in these woods with her, and whatever it is has silenced the animals of the forest. There is a rustling nearby. She kneels, yanks her bow from its clasp on her back, and loads an arrow, pulling the string taut. Breath held, she waits. From among the dense trees steps a white wolf. Isabetta gasps and almost falls before training the arrow on the creature. She aims just below the snout. Here the heart rests, ripe for the picking. The wolf's ice-blue eyes gaze at her without fear, and it sits back on its haunches, tongue lolling. Despite its apparent calmness, the sight of its many sharp teeth causes her mouth to go dry. The wolf shakes its head, hunches over. She watches as the fur shortens, disappears, leaving behind pale flesh and white hair. As she stares in disbelief, those icy eyes meet hers again, and she recognizes the woman who now kneels before her. Grandmother? My dear Isabetta, I was so relieved to send you. Send me? Oh yes, my senses are enhanced when I'm in wolf form. The better to smell you with, my dear. She laughs and stands and approaches Isabetta, opening her arms and pulling her into a hug. Isabetta pulls back, looks at her grandmother. She removes her cloak and wraps it around the woman's frail, naked body. What's going on? How are you? A wolf? This is your legacy. You've already become a woman. Now you become a wolf. No, uh, how is that possible? She steps back, distancing herself from her grandmother's words, but as she gazes into the woman's eyes, she feels a pull deep within her. At first, it's just an odd sensation, a tingle. It builds, growing warm and spreading throughout her body. Then the pain begins and she sinks to her knees. Her scream edges into something that sounds more like a howl, a primal call to the world. Her grandmother kneels down, face in front of hers. Don't fight it, let the change take you. She smiles tenderly, but doesn't touch her granddaughter. Slumping forward, Isabetta watches as her nails lengthen, darken, her hands shorten into paws. Her vision distorts and sharp pricks rush across her skin as brown hair sprouts from it. Countless smells tickle her senses forming distinctive impressions. She feels exalted, free. The desire to run, to hunt, is overwhelming. Yet she also feels fear deep within her. It battles with this other piece of herself, panic wells. Before she can embrace her primal urges, the process reverses. The warmth pulls back into her body, flees to her center where it burrows and settles like a solitary pebble. She falls in onto her side, panting and wrapping her arms around herself as goosebumps spring up along her flesh. Her grandmother, still kneeling, shifts position and drapes the warm cloak over her body. Her voice is soft when she says, as this cloak was presented to you when you became a woman, so it now signifies your journey to wolf. But I failed, grandmother, I didn't become a wolf. You did not fail at all, my dear. Next time, she'll stay longer. Isabetta reaches out a hand, somehow surprised to see it smooth and free of fur, and finds her grandmother's. She doesn't understand what's happening, nor does she know what awaits her, but she does know that this feels right. The wolf has long been waiting for this moment for her awakening. 
And something I failed to mention was that these stories were all to be based off of fairy tales. So this one is Little Red Riding Hood, if you didn't catch that. And I just wanted to do a different twist with the wolf and Little Red Riding Hood. So thank you for listening. I hope that you'll look me up and enjoy the rest of Mile High Con. Thanks.